welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hello and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. How is everybody doing? I hope you all are staying safe with the news, with this new variant, this Omicron. Please stay safe this holiday season. I want to wish everybody a happy holidays. Um, It's crazy out there, so we have to, you know, take care of each other. And I hope you guys are having a good holiday season. I can't believe it's Christmas time already. I feel like I was just doing this a few months ago and here we are again and I just have to tell you guys and this is just a little thing that I do I keep my little Christmas tree up all year because I just love it so much (laughs) so it's still up and I look at it every day it just makes me so happy Um, today I have a really cool guest her name is Kara Dwin Greenleaf and she was on my show when I first started here at Own Times in October of 2020, and she was kind enough to return today, and we're going to share in the celebration of the winter solstice and Yule, so just stay tuned, and she's going to join me in a few minutes. For those of you who are new to tuning into my show for the first time, I am also an author and a photographer, and my book is titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams. And in my book, there are 30 manifesting stories along with photographs that I took of the contributors manifesting postcards. And I include in my book writing exercises to help us get clear on what we want to manifest and a toolbox full of fun exercises on how to bring about love, money, health, career, and so much more. And this is really good at this time of the year, this book, because we're coming into the new year. So it's time to think about what do we want to bring in um, in our lives in 2022. And if you are interested in doing inner work exercises and reading people's incredible journeys of transformation, inspiration, and manifesting, please go and purchase a copy of this book. And I also want to mention, and I mentioned it last week, that Mango Publishing, who is my publisher and also my guest, Kara Dwin's publisher, is doing a holiday special this year. And it's 20% off all books for the holidays. So if you go to Mango, that's M-A-N-G-O dot B-Z, you can find all the books. And Kara Dwin's got a bunch of books listed on there. So you can see some of her books that are on sale for the holidays. And books are fantastic holiday gifts. I love getting and giving books as gifts. Books are the kinds of gifts that keep on giving. And if you fall in love with a book, it stays with you forever. Okay, so my regular listeners already know this, that each week I share a Magic Monday message, and it's an image of a manifesting postcard that I photograph with an affirmation that I like to focus on for that week. And using affirmations daily is a powerful way for it to become a new belief in our lives, and that is a great way to harness the energy, because this week's magical message is, harness the universe's power. What is harnessing universal power? Well, using the the power of the law of attraction to our advantage. This law takes place every day and we need to recognize that it exists and even more, we can learn how to harness it. There's no on or off switch for this powerful force in the universe. It's always on. All you need to do is embrace it and let it work for you. Everything has a vibration, even our thoughts. It's crazy to think about that, but our thoughts vibrate out. So to do a little harnessing of the universe's power, we need to be aware of what we are putting out there, even what we are just thinking and feeling. We think it's private, but it's not. So visualization is a powerful tool for this because what you constantly think about, you will bring about. So if you... If you do this little exercise of visualization using all your senses, immerse yourself in living in what you want through smell, touch, sound, feel, anything that you can uh, imagine for having this experience and be the star in your movie, not the audience. Don't watch yourself doing it. Visualize yourself doing it. Get super specific 
as much as you can. Imagine every detail. If you're, if you're seeing yourself on vacation, then just imagine what the wind feels like through your hair or the temperature in the air and practice attracting the positive things that you want. And it takes a lot of repetition and patience. And that's why affirmations are so great because you can say them over and over again. And as you've heard me speak about this many times before, gratitude. Keep a gratitude journal. And by the way, I'm giving away a, uh, a gratitude, 30-day gratitude um, it's a visual course, it's a PDF, and if you sign up for my newsletter on my website, it automatically comes in your inbox, inbox, and so that's a little gift that I'm giving away to people. Okay, to see my magical messages each week, you can find them on my social media, and I because I post them every Monday, and if you're on Facebook, you can join my Postcards of Love group. We share inspirational stuff and pictures and animal stuff, you know, all the stuff that we love that makes us happy. Next week, which is the last Wednesday of the year, Christopher Witecki, the Sensei to Serious Joy. Sensei Christopher is a master astrologer and spiritual life coach that focuses on building inner happiness and personal joy. And he calls it Serious Joy, named after the brightest star in the sky. And he's going to be here, and he is going to give us some great insights into 2022. So you want to join me for next week for that great show. I can't wait to hear what he's going to say that we have in store for us. All right, to get to my guest today. Cara Dwin Greenleaf is a writing instructor, a medieval scholar, and practicing astrologer. She leads spirituality workshops and retreats throughout the U.S. and has published a number of books on mysticism. In addition to her series of books with Mango Publishing, she is the author of Running Press best-selling gift books, The Witch's Spellbook, and Spells for Love and Romance. She has led ritual and magic workshops throughout the North America. Greenleaf's graduate work in medieval studies has given her deep insight into ancient spells she utilizes in her work, making her work unique in the field. And today... We're going to be celebrating Yule and the winter solstice, the time to celebrate the return of the light, and she's going to help us understand a little bit more about that. So if you want to find out more about her, you can go to her website and read her blog posts on yourmagicalhome.blogspot.com. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for being here with me today. How are you? Good. I'm thrilled to be celebrating solstice and the coming Yule with you, Melissa, and your listeners. Oh, thank you. Okay, so you were here with me like when I first started on Oh Times. I had a I was on another radio platform for a few years before I came here. And we were talking about I think it was what were we talking about? October. Sawin? Sawin. That's yeah. what we were talking about then. Okay. Definitely. I had to think what's, yeah. what's that yeah. time. Um, so just for those who are who may are listening for the first time, you on my show, can you share a little bit about your background and how you got into the magical arts? Yeah, I have another blog, which is Middle Earth Magic, um, which is on Pagan Square. But like, I think my, my, my blog sort of interlace and one leads to another. And um, strangely enough, it was sort of my love of J.R.R. Tolkien um, and reading him in grade school. And then as a teen and tween, like, you know, there, there's a lot of magic there. There's magical rings. There's talking mm. trees. There's, like, elves and, and, and dwarves and all kinds of, like, sort of magical beings. And so I just loved that fantasy world so much that, that I decided that I wanted to be like J.R.R. Tolkien. And so I read like all of the biographies I could get a hold of him, like in, uh, you know, when I was like probably like 14 or something. And like, I think I just sort of followed the breadcrumbs of like Northern Europe and UK and Saxons and Celts and Nordic magic and everything. And it, it opened my mind up to the fact that like a magical thinking really, and more and more and more, I, um, realize that that's that is what you and I both do like mm-hmm. Melissa and many others that like manifesting is is magical thinking and also believing and then creating the circumstances where your greatest wishes as long as they're for the good of all can happen right. 
That's and so, so true. it's sort of that that simple. Yeah. But um, I sort of love that, like, my path started off with just a love of some great books. And, like, so that sort of started with a literary journal and then sort of ended up uh, in belief in myself because time and again I would see how – you know, spells and charms and enchantments and, and, you know, also in magical intention just mm-hmm. worked. It works for me. And then I would recommend it to my friends and it worked for them. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Let's keep doing it. Yeah, it does work. Mm-hmm. I love doing the rituals and stuff. I love it. I have like an altar set up. I have, you know, I have all my like notes in my own book, my special book that I write spells in. So I love doing it. So and and you're right. And I was always attracted to it when I was a kid too. And now, you know, from my book, you're right. What that I'm doing it through the manifesting, you know, I'm focusing on it through manifesting. And then I'm use, I use photography as my special, you know, ingredient in manifesting. Mm -hmm. That's my special Mm -hmm. ingredient, which is cool. So you are an author and you decided that you wanted to write books. Now, how many books have you written? I think it's still, I, it was 17 when we last talked, and now it's gotten to 18. <laughs> yeah, because I saw. Some of them are little itty bitties, though. Some of them <laughs> are itty it. bitties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in fact, you have like, a new uh, one coming out, right? In 2022, the Practical Witches Love Spell Book. I saw that. When's yes. that going to be released? <laughs> Yes, yeah. This is really funny, but like the little like uh, um, running press, like itty bitty books and the Chronicle mm-hmm. uh, Good Spell books, like Z Budapest, who was one of my mentors that I'm so grateful for. Like I gave her some and like she had this twinkle in her eye and she said, not a lot of heavy lifting here. And I said, that's right. Like, you know, it was basically just fun because they're beautiful objet. And I, I put those little books on my altar and shrines and then like we'll open them up and sort of get the the blessing and charm for the day i love that i love that i have your book right now sitting um i sitting in my hands the witch's guide to rituals spells incantations Mm -hmm. and inspired ideas for an enchanted life which this book is really um is packed with information like you really like yeah this is a great like if you're if you're listening and you're you kind of want to tap into you know Keridan's work and what we're talking about, this would be a good first book to start because you give us a little bit of everything, and then you can go back and you know get specific books if like you say you want to work on you know pr- love spells or you know other other moon mm-hmm. magic. You get into more detail on those, but this is a great book because it has everything. Well, um, I wanted to talk about this time of year because this is a special time of year, winter solstice in mm-hmm. witch, Wiccan or witchcraft traditions and also Yule. So what what is what is Yule? What does it mean? And then we'll get into different ways that we can celebrate and the, the, how it coincides with the w- winter solstice. Definitely. I mean, it's one of the high holy days of the year. There's like the, um, you know, there's also the uh, summer solstice on June 21st. And so, you know, they're tying six months apart. And, um, you know, the, they're, they're, um, these are old rituals that you can sort of customize to your, your own taste. But in the Witch's Guide to Ritual, I write that, you know, the god represents the sun, and he's born December 21st, which is the winter solstice, and grows steadily until the 21st, the summer solstice, when his power reaches the, the fullest. And um, after midsummer, his power wanes, and he expires with the shortening daylight hour. So um, last night was the longest night of the year, and so mm-hmm. actually the days will start getting a little shorter starting today, but the God is reborn and he's sort of seen and re- represents like the physical and the tangible. He can be seen in the hunt, the harvest and vitality, strength, sensuality, passion, like the very uh, or, uh, you know, origins of life. And then the goddess is the, um, you know, is the partner and she is mm-hmm. the creator of all, you know, all, all, all humans are born like from a woman and the goddess is in every woman that gives birth. Um, and the great mother is the keeper of the cycles of birth, death and life. 
and is reflected in nature and the seasons. And so, um, you know, to some extent, like the God rules the physical world while the God, uh, God is governor is intuition, dreams, and the, and the mind. And so these are times to just hold, you know, like I love to do bonfires like on the, the winter solstice. And, you know, unfortunately here in the San Francisco Bay Area, we're having a big storm and everything, but I had candles lit. And, and, you know, I lit a fire and did prayers. And, of course, like now with, um, you know, with the, the new news about variants and everything, mm-hmm. I, I you know, needed to cancel anything group-wise and just, like, sort mm-hmm. of share, um, you know, share in, in um, over, you know, distances with my loved ones and celebrating the, the solstice. And, but, um, you know, if you have one candle, you can do it. And uh, what I have noticed is that there's an interesting phenomena um, that happened with Wiccans and people on the spiritual path during uh, COVID, which is that we're doing a lot of solo rituals. So I, when I realized that, I thought, oh, that chapter in the Witch's Guide to Ritual, which is Coven of One, like, you know, spells and charms for the solo practitioner, that I need to build that out. I need to give people like a whole book mm-hmm. because while I hope and I intend that like all of the, um, you know, the, the options for making yourself safe, like new pills, Novavax, like whatever mm-hmm. boosters, like whatever it is, mm-hmm. that it can help people stay happy and healthy. Um, but, you know, I think for a while, like, I know I'm probably, you know, uh, going to be doing many more solo spells and things like in, mm-hmm. in definitely into 2022. So I want to, that I, 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 I sort of love that my inspiration for me, my next book actually was born from the pages of the witch's guide to ritual and then also born with something I see that is a genuine need for people. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. So this is a, a Yule and a um, solstice that will largely be sent, spent as a coven of one. And that doesn't make it any less sacred. Honestly, it doesn't. And sometimes for me, like um, doing a, a ritual by myself is actually can even be more calming and grounding I agree. I'm going to stop you right here because I want to talk more about that when we come back. So let's take our first commercial break here and guys stay tuned and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. We have a lot more to share. Stay tuned. Conscious media for conscious minds. Ohm times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited.
The rainbow is God's promise of hope for you and me. And though the clouds hang heavy and the sun we cannot see, we know above the dark clouds that fill the stormy sky, hope's rainbow will come shining through when the clouds have drifted by. Teresa Caprio is the president and founder of Rainbow Guardian Inc., a nonprofit 501c3 serving the intellectually challenged slash developmentally disabled, including autism. Teresa started the foundation in 1995 so she could help make a better life for her intellectually challenged daughter. Her dream is that the Rainbow Guardian will provide the necessary tools and education to help the public understand the special needs population because it's often discarded in mainstream society. To find out more or make a donation and support, please go to www.rainbowguardian.org. Rainbow Guardian's special mission is to see these unique people live a happy, full life and have a future of liberty and equality. Welcome back. And if you're just joining me, I have a great guest today, Cara Dwin Greenleaf on, and she's an author and a witch. And we're talking about uh, Yule in the winter solstice and magical practices and spells and incantations and, and all that fun stuff, right? <laughs> we want to keep it fun and mm-hmm. light and good. And, you know, and all this stuff is always with the intention of good. And you even talk about in your book, you know, you're, oh, what you're always putting out there is good energy, high vibration. You're not talking about anything dark. So I just want to clarify that. Very positive and for the yeah. good of all. That's and all you have to do is say and for the good of all and, and weave that into your intention and you will have done it. You will yeah. help the world. Yeah, because people hear witch, witchcraft, Wiccan, and they get like, oh, that's dark stuff. And no, that's not that's not what it is at all. You know, we're talking mm-hmm. about celebrating, and it's a lot of it is celebrate celebrating the earth and Mother Nature and the gods and the goddesses and honoring and stuff. And that's part of the celebration of this time of year also, right? That's honoring of the winter solstice and um, doing that kind of magical work, correct? Mm-hmm. Definitely. And um I mean just like manifesting and spells like go hand in hand. I mean, you know, there's uh oftentimes with manifesting, you know, there's not like uh um the words of the spells and like a whole ritual and all the stuff you need. It can be more of a meditative practice or something just in your mind or like we said, like an intention you put out into the world for the good of all. Yeah, yeah. And like I said early in the show, like visualization, if you're sitting there with your eyes closed and you're, you're, you're visualizing, you, you're spell casting. You just don't realize mm-hmm. that you are, right? <laughs> That's right, what you're doing. Right. So is there any, um, oh, before we do that, I wanted to ask you, because you said this before the break, you said that the, one of the things about this um, pandemic, which you noticed is, you you feel called now to maybe do a book for a solitary pra- practitioner because and mm-hmm. s- because we can't really work in groups right now we're still being super careful and and i think it's good that you have found you know that's what i try to do is look for some positive things that are coming out of you know the pandemic and having to be isolated and i noticed that my artwork changed a lot. My photography changed a lot in the past mm. almost two years now and the way I photographed the postcards. And also, I, I'm almost finished with my second book, which I had time to write because mm-hmm. I was home a lot, which right. I'm really excited about, you know. And mm-hmm. the oracle cards I'm creating to go along with the book. So that happened because of the pandemic. So for us that are home alone and, you know, want to be practicing solitary, what could we do right now in honor of the winter solstice and Yule um, for manifesting right at this time? Right. Well, um, I you can do um, something akin to what I did, which was like, you know, put a comfortable pillow down on the floor in front of a fireplace and have... Mm-hmm fallen wood like I'm whenever I'm on my walk I try to walk every day and I'll pick up people probably think like that lady is crazy because they'll (laughs) see me like picking up branches but it's because I want to find fallen 
wood um, to build fires with. And like particularly some really beautiful branches like can be turned into wands too, um, Mm. which is like a really important magical tool. So I had like a small fire of bound wood and I put incense in it. And then I actually like, you know, sort of, invoked some goddesses which you know i invoked uh bridget and diana and morgan and the goddess carried when not myself a heaven's mm-hmm. queen and i said by the light of this moon and this dark night like teach us every mystery of rebirth and then you know i lit um candles and mm-hmm. um then i i sort of meditated and smelled the the incense and smelled the fire and just sort of was just resonating to the fact that, that I was, you know, creating a small, cozy little ritual at home all by myself, but that it was akin to something that had been happening for thousands of years, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So I felt the Mm -hmm. connection with, you know, holiness and with people before that were invoking gods and goddesses. And then I said, you know, I spoke um, one of my, um, you know, spells that I created some years ago for this um, high holy day. It was just queen of the stars, queen of the moon, queen of the earth, bringer of fire. Um, Great mother gives birth to this new year. We're, you know, we are her witnesses. Blessed blessed be. Um, I also had a cauldron and um, sort of... um, you know, added uh, things I had written. Some I added some um, little um, manifestations, blessings that I had written down. What I'm hoping for the new year, what I'm I'm hoping to manifest and magically think in it, which is like health for all, um, understanding for an end of the pandemic, and and I, maybe the most important you know wish that I wrote down and put into the cauldron was for people to come closer together and not be so divided. You know, we're all the same. I mean, we're all interconnected. And I love, you know, um, being able to, like, access all kinds of cool websites and pagans on Instagram and, and you know, Facebook and social media and things like that. But it, it does worry me that somehow social media, like, there's two sides of that coin, you know, and there's disinformation which I believe is born of loneliness. I I know that I would say every listener has, you know, um, had some kind of loneliness in the last couple of years, but there's been like a global um, phenomena of loneliness that's been happening for um, at least 20 years that I know of. And it's international too. Like I read something that broke my heart, which is the elder uh, Japanese women, you know, that have outlived their husbands and all their friends are going to little stores and shop to lifting little tiny things so that they can be put in jail so they're not alone. Now, Melissa, oh my that broke God. my that is, heart. That is heartbreaking. It's, I know. So I intend that they find community without having to shoplift. But, but I think that that's loneliness is what causes mm-hmm. people to go onto YouTube and, like, watch mm-hmm. things that, like, you know, change right. their mind because they feel like they're part of a group. Mm-hmm. And their minds are like, you know, they feel like they need to like follow the group, like with their the ideas and things. And so I think it's born of loneliness. So I want to manifest like a new level of community and bonds, loving mm-hmm. bonds between people. That is my greatest hope for 2022 and, and, and beyond is let us be bonded with peace and love. Mm. Yeah. I never for thought about all. it. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it as loneliness, but when you're, I'm hearing you talking about it, it, it's resonating, it's making sense. You know, people are mm-hmm. alone and they're going down that rabbit hole and they're they're looking for communities to join up with. And if they are feeling vulnerable, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I did a a, a ritual um, for the upcoming new year that was uh, similar, kind of similar about the global, you know, the global pandemic and for healing of the world and mother nature and the climate change and all that kind of stuff. You know, I like to do something Mm -hmm. at the end of the year to bring into the new year. So it's a good time to do that right now. So for those Mm -hmm. of you listening, you know, set your intention um, for what you want 
2022 to look like? I mean, do it for yourself personally, of course, what you want, but do it for the world. What, what do you want the world to look like? You want a kinder world, a more compassionate world? Set the intention for that. Because if a lot of us are doing that, I mean, that's what makes it so powerful. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, because working alone is great, but if we're all working for a global good together, our 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 we are we're just raising the power, and the universe will respond to that. We'll start to see those things show up, and the vibration too. Like one thing I've been reminded of in the last couple of years, and it really keeps coming into my mind. Like just in the last couple of months, is that. Um, I mean, there's plenty to worry about and get anxious about, and I'm just as anxious and worried as anyone else. But when I remember to raise my vibration with with meditation and and affirmations and positive thoughts and charms and spells, like I'm raising my vibration to like hopefully like blue and purple and violet Mm -hmm. blue and those colors, like those sort of aura highest colors. And when you do that, you can actually invoke uh, not just gods and goddesses, but also like helpers, you know, those who have passed mm-hmm. on, those are that are on the other side, like guards and go- gu- guides and guardians. Mm-hmm. And you can call upon the guides and guardians to help because that's, mm-hmm. that's what they can do now. You know, they can be more helpful on the other side. So um, that that is like unbelievably powerful. That is also something you can really only do by yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. to raise your vibration to those beautiful higher chakra colors and then call upon like, you know, maybe you have like a grandmother that died and like she didn't do anything witchy, but like she was a powerful woman and and you noticed that like she was super wise, like, Mm -hmm. you know, call upon grandmother to like, you know, help, help you with something you're, you're experiencing that is difficult and to like, you know, help be a bringer of peace and help you be a bringer of peace. Mm, Yeah, that's a good idea. That's good. I call, I call Mm -hmm. my grandmother all the time. I talk to her all the time. (laughs) I bet you do. I I have this feeling you (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was, she was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you and you mentioned it before, but, um, are there certain gods or goddesses that are associated specifically that we could be honoring this time of year? Cause I know, you know, at certain magical high holy days, there are certain gods that they recommend that you work with or you call to or you honor or you place gifts at your altar if you want to create an altar who's associated with right yeah I mean I mentioned like Bridget and Diana and Morgan and and Karen when but in truth like you can just call upon like you know um, Mother Earth like you know Gaia like because like she's sort of the queen of of Earth which is where we live and and she's super powerful and working with her can uh, also benefit us because you mentioned um, climate change, which is something Mm -hmm. we really is impacting like everybody, whether you know it or not, like strange Mm -hmm. storms and floods and tornadoes and extreme weather. So like, let's, let's, I I would say that if there's one goddess call upon mother earth and, and Mm -hmm. work with her, invoke her, on a continuing basis because like that is uh, some of the highest work we can do on the spiritual path. Because the thing about Wicca is it's like an earth magic. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And I, and you know, uh, you know, I'm in South Florida and I know you come here a lot. Um, So Mm -hmm. it's been, it's definitely getting hotter every year and it's always hot here, but it's significantly getting warmer and with these hurricanes. So I, I always like to imagine like, um, and this is at Christmas time, like, uh, like Father Christmas blowing out cold air and like encasing the earth and like cooling her down <laughs> just a couple, a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, like if oh, we just beautiful. imagine her mm-hmm. cooling down just a couple of degrees that brings, you know, I feel like she's hot because also a lot of it's our energy, it's our rage, it's our heat, it's our anger that's manifesting too. Do you feel that way? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I do. I do. And, you know, last time I flew um, was a couple of Fridays ago, and I had no idea that I was actually flying during tornadoes. And if I had known, I would have been, I think, freaking out. And the, the only I didn't watch, you know, the news or anything um, that that day. Um, and I'm glad I did. I didn't even check things on my phone. I was just busy trying to wrap up and then, you know, get on the plane and not miss my plane. And so then, like the captain came on, like one as we were um, the minute we um, got into the air and as we were climbing, he said. I'm going to take you over uh, the southern route. We're going to cover, um, go over the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico, and the trip, the trip will be over six hours. Now, usually from San Francisco Bay Area to Miami is five mm-hmm. max. And then right. often on the way back, we get like a tailwind and it can mm-hmm. be under five hours. So for it to be so long, I was like, what is going on? And I had no idea. And he was very like sort of brisk about it. And then, you know, it was just normal flight. There was some turbulence, but not a lot. Um, and they, But they kept the um, fasten seatbelt on the whole time. And then I got home in, you know, in uh, on back in my car to get, get back home. And I turned on NPR and I discovered that was the really terrible night of the tornadoes, especially mm-hmm. in Kentucky. Yeah. And I was like, I was flying in a tornado? Right. <laughs> and they didn't, right. I mean... I, I was like I would I was safe, but like I would have been terrified. Mm-hmm. I know we're having more extreme weather, so I think globally we really need to respect our planet and and visualize her healing and sending her a lot of love. And when we change on the inside, it will reflect on the outside. So. Um, Guys, this is this is a time for our second break. So before I have more questions for Kara Joanne, let's take our break here mm-hmm. and then we're gonna come back in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. 
Join a virtual book club. Set up group text chats or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. So I was thinking during the break, um, because I know you have an altar. Do you change your altar all the time? Um, Did you did you set up a specific one for for Yule and the celebration? I did. And I do change it like I don't completely like recreate it, but Mm -hmm. I just change it up for the seasons. And so I got a white feather and white candles and white crystals like to sort of represent like, you know, winter and the wind and frozen water and snow and everything like that. And so it's very, very pretty and um and easy to do too i mean like i uh, will admit melissa that like i'm a bit of a cheap skate <laughs> and so you know <laughs> i i will find like pretty white rocks in my path mm-hmm. i will find as you know like fallen wood like white birch and things yeah. like that and they're just so beautiful i mean those are gifts from mother earth and then mm-hmm. you know i'll see something like you know even a beautiful leaf like a spectacularly beautiful leaf and like mm-hmm. carefully bring it in and preserve it so it's like you know perfect um and add that so look around you when you're walking i think i think many of us are walking more you know because we can't mm-hmm. socialize in the way we did before mm-hmm. so we're taking walks we, you know go for a walk in the park or in the woods or or whatever and keep your eye out for gifts from mother earth because every day She's giving us gifts, large and small. So find those that you can use and incorporate as holy objects into your altar and into your life. Yeah, that's a good idea. I love having an altar too. I love it. It's fun. They're fun to create. And there's no Mm -hmm. rule. You can do whatever you're attracted to. There's no rule. Like whatever you find that you want to that's sacred to you or that you want to see every day or that you want to honor, you know, and your candles or your, you know, your crystals, or like you said, you're finding things, finding feathers and rocks and stuff. I love, Mm -hmm. I love putting an altar together. They're a lot of fun to do. And then I always have books on them also. You know, because I'm right. (laughs) Well, of course, Mm -hmm. I I have my books, my favorite books. Um, Do Mm -hmm. you now I've read this. I I think we're manifesting all the time. We're always constantly manifesting. We're just not realizing it. But I do love doing rituals with the moon, with the energies of the moon. So do you recommend um, doing manifesting uh, rituals with the new moon and then letting go with the full moon. I, I know a lot of a lot of people say that that's what you should do. I feel like we're always manifesting. Whatever we're focusing on is what we're attracting. But I do know sometimes certain times, certain times of the day or, you know, of the year or the month are more maybe energetically powerful. I don't know what the right word or term would be. Right. Now, that's pretty uh, well stated, Melissa. But the new moon is when you can bring new things into your life. So when the moon is dark and you can't see it, like, you know, Mm -hmm. new moon is really an opportunity to sow the seeds of newness in your life. And I am, I would say that, like, that's when I've done some of my, you know, best manifesting. But the waxing moon, as the the moon is growing, can also Mm -hmm. work, too. But the new moon is just like you get, like, a new blank slate. So what do you want in your life? You know, that is uh, not just good for you, but also for the good of all. And like, you can manifest like a new car, uh, which Mm -hmm. sounds selfish, but you know, maybe, you know, yours is like on its last leg, like mine is. And so I was thinking, Mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm going to let it get a little more broken down. Then I'm going to manifest one. But like, how, how is that for the good of all is because I will be, you know, uh, going to places where, you know, I'm helping people like um, mm-hmm. I have a this is so, well, it sounds you know kind of funny but like my front porch is kind of an out box um, and I am always like you know what do I no longer need that can service uh, service other people so you know if I get a candle and like I turn out like I don't love the the smell of it mm-hmm. or or a book that like I've read two times and I can release mm. it out into the universe or, or even pots and pans and like really practical things like that. 
I will gather up like a full out box and take it to my local recycling reuse center. There's a reuse mm-hmm. center. And like mm-hmm. I've walked up, um, you know, walked up with like candles in my hand that like, you know, they're, somebody else is going to love them and be able to manifest good things in their life with them. And what is really funny to me is that there's this, this one older gentleman, probably somebody's nice grandpa. And when he sees me coming with candles, he'll run up and say, of course, we're all masked and everything. Mm-hmm. He'll run up at a, a safe distance and say like, what sense is this? And I'll say it's <laughs> like, you know, uh, bergamot uh, cinnamon or something like that and then he'll go oh oh that's for me then and I'll put it down like and and then wait for him to like you know come get it and and I love that like things that no longer serve me can help others so I use my car to like transport like things like that Mm -hmm. um to the reuse center and that's a way that I know it's for the good of all um, you know, and, and so I'm very mindful that like, you know, whatever we give, mm-hmm. like we'll come back and that's not the intention, but that's how the universe works. This works. That's how it works, mm-hmm. right? Whatever you give will come back. Exactly. That's very, mm-hmm. very true. And that's why you see people who, <clears throat> um, sometimes have really, are mean and have terrible dispositions and are grumpy will have a lot of always have problems or always complaining will always have more problems mm-hmm. because that's what they keep putting out there and people who are very generous you know you you always know that that one person that you're like yeah what things are always easily coming to them and then if you know mm-hmm. this person and you know they're a happy giving person you could say oh that's why because it's reciprocated mm-hmm. so yes it's mm-hmm. important to do that that's really good that you are very aware of it. And truthfully, getting yourself a new car is because you deserve it and it makes you feel good. So that raises your vibration. So you're mm-hmm. nicer and happier to be around. So that's the for the good of all, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. And also mm-hmm. having an attitude of gratitude like that, yes. you know, I uh, adopted that. I would say like 25 years ago, like really, really consciously. Um, and, um, you know, you can, you can, something really challenging can be happening in your day where you're mm-hmm. like worried or kind of freaking out or panicking. I mean, it happens to us all. Mm-hmm. And then I'll stop myself still and literally just say, okay, what am I grateful for in this moment? Like what are three things I'm grateful for? And that completely reframes it. The stress falls away. The anxiety falls away. And I remember what's positive. What do I have? And so, like, you know, uh, we we obviously live in stressful times. Mm -hmm. So that simple, simple practice um, can, can really help you, can help anyone. Oh, for sure. I talk about gratitude all the time, all the time, because that's, Mm -hmm. I think, one of the most powerful tools in for manifesting. If you want something, be grateful in your life and you are raising your vibration for you to get those things that you want. Right. So if you want a new car, we're just using car because we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Then be grateful for the car that has served you for so many years. I always name my cars. Each car I get, I give it a name and I always talk to my car and I always tell my car how much I love her. It's always a girl. <laughs> I was tell her how mm-hmm. much I love her and thank you. And, you know, and, and it makes my whole driving experience and my car has, have served me well because I'm very grateful mm-hmm. for them. Right. So yes, that's mm-hmm. important. Yeah. That's why I wanted mm-hmm. to do that gratitude. I created that course because I thought, hmm, what could be really more interesting than using our phones to take pictures of what we're grateful for and using that as like a gratitude journal, you know, with your photos Mm -hmm. and your thing and creating a whole thing. And I wanted to give it away for people because I feel like I created it. I do it. And and why not give it to others? You know, just give it to them. And whoever, Mm -hmm. whoever it resonates with will use it and get something out of it. Hopefully, Mm -hmm. hopefully, yeah. (laughs) I I intend they do for the good of all. (laughs) I intend they. That's good. So, do you um do like do you have like a daily? I'm sure you have daily practices, but do you have a daily practice that maybe we could also incorporate that may help us? Um, you know, moving into 2022. 
Absolutely. Every single morning, I set an intention. So it's my part of my magical thinking. Mm-hmm. I will reinforce it later in the day, too. So mm-hmm. the minute I open my eyes and realize it's a new day, whether it's like, you know, 6 a.m. or, you know, 7.30 or whatever, depending on my, you know, obligations in the day, the minute I do that, I will set an intention. And like, so this morning, I intended that this radio show really reached a lot of people and helped them and brought like more joy and personal empowerment into their lives. I also wished for um, help for myself and a couple of other people. And then like, like I said, I reinforce, and I always say, you know, I intend this is happening and at then like at the, at the, for the good of all. And so it is, or, you know, mm-hmm. blessed be, and then I'm a bath taker. I'm a double Pisces. So mm. just running a bath like feels much more of like, um, you know, a ritual involving my, um, my native element as opposed to showers. And so I'm a bath taker. I put in some yummy like essential oils and things like that in there. I change it up all the time. Today was lavender. And mm-hmm. so um, I will um, I will sort of uh, re-up my intention for the day. And because by then I've had tea or coffee or whatever, I'm sort of more like, you know, my mm-hmm. mind is probably more powerful than the just woken up mind. And so I will enhance it. Like, for example, like, you know, um, I'll address my relationship and say that, like, I intend that, like, our love becomes deeper and that we fill each mm-hmm. other with more joy and that like we're, you know, even happier together and wish things for my friends. And the thing I want your listeners uh, to know, Melissa, is that language and the words you use are super, super mm-hmm. important. You can't say, I wish for this to happen. You speak of it as it is happening. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and we are, and our love is growing instead of, I want my mm-hmm. love, you know, to grow, or I wish it would happen. Our love is growing. So you speak of it in the present as it's happening. And that will supercharge your manifestations and supercharge your, your spell work and your charms mm-hmm. and rituals. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I mean, I haven't done an in-person workshop, obviously, because of COVID in the past two years. Mm -hmm. But when I do them, I always like, you know, don't say I want to bring this in. I always say it in the affirmative is I have this or I am that Mm -hmm. or yeah, yeah. So that's important, right? Because yeah, instead Mm -hmm. of just saying I wish for. Um, We only have like a few minutes. Is there anything that you really want us to know that we didn't get a chance to touch on today? Well, I feel like we covered a lot of great ground and specifically talked about, you know, um, magical thinking and and languaging. It was very important to me to like remember, like to talk about the tense you are. Uh, tense you're using and and that you know will really empower you and change change your life I mean you know people will ask me like you know how is it that you have such a great job and a great relationship Mm -hmm. and and you're healthy and you know you have a lot of loving friends and I'll say like well it didn't like just happen like I, Mm -hmm. I work on it every day very consciously through my intending and my rituals and spell work. And and it is always to the positive. And so, but, you know, some of my friends, like, you know, one of them that I love dearly, she, she has a job she hates. She hasn't been in a relationship for a long time. And like, it's sort of, we're an odd pair. Like we're, when we, you know, um, she was in my pod and we would like, you know, do stuff together very safely, all masked up, even with gloves and practically hosing each other down with hand sanitizer. But, and like, for, but for whatever reason, like she's skeptical, like she's uh, Mm -hmm. very like, um, she's a Bostonian, you know, New Englander and like, they're just by nature kind of skeptical. And so I, I really hope that 2022 is the year that like she opens her mind and heart to more, Mm -hmm. um, magical thinking and manifesting and positivity and everything, because I, I see that she's in pain and lonely, you know, mm-hmm. and this loneliness has sort of been like the unofficial subtext, I think of this um, hour with you. And mm-hmm. so just if we all have people on our lives that are, that, that aren't as happy as they could be. And so 
how can you like sort of heal them from a distance? Because like when somebody is like literally, you know, has an illness or something like that, you can do long distance rituals that are very mm. powerful. And I know there's a couple in my book. So what in 2022, like dear listeners and Melissa, like what, what can we, how can we very consciously bring gifts and more happiness and health and healing into the world? Like how can we manifest like very purposefully, like from specific people in your life and to like, you know, the, the peoples of the world in general, because it might sound grandiose, but it's not like in, in every day in ways large and small, you can do things and take actions and speak intentions that are for the good of all. Perfect. That was perfect. Thank you, God. Thank you so much, Cara Joanne. That was great. And you can look at all of her books, but you really should check out The Witch's Guide to Ritual because it's packed with information. We didn't even get into candle work. She has in there ritual tools, colors, all that stuff that you can do, which is so fun. So I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that you uh, joined me um, for wrapping up 2021 and looking forward to 2022 being yes. much better for all of us. Thank you, My guys. My pleasure. I feel like I got a dose of your personal magic, Melissa, and I'm very grateful for you and Aww. all that you do. Thank you. And back at you. Thank you so much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. And happy holidays, everyone. Whatever you celebrate, I celebrate Christmas. So Merry Christmas. And I'll see you next week. Peace.